All right, grand evening, everyone. It's Shay Seeking, and I'm back with another video. And again, you know, for me, <clears throat> this whole journey of um, finding me, going within, you know, uh, trying to make sure that I am going in a direction that will be pleasing to Elohim and the ancestors. And so again, I've been talking about this whole journey that I've been on for a couple of um, months now. Now, <clears throat> in my heart, I feel like, you know, um, there's some reason why I picked up this book today. And um, I feel like with current events and, you know, just being someone that, again, um, can see but not see, right? So, um, you know, uh, over the course of events, I feel like there's a, it's a parallel or uh, different levels to this journey. There's portions of it that I'm able to see, and there's portions <clears throat> that I can see like in hindsight by just, if, just being aware of surroundings and just peering in or um, um, kind of paying attention to what's going on in my feed, right? With those that are soul siblings, those that are maybe not those that are around me and those that I've been communing with again, um, in the spiritual realm in here. So I don't know, today I picked up this book and again, I'm going to do like how I always do kind of like a scrying kind of thing where I'm reading the text, but while we're going through it, it's going to just be triggering things to help me remember and see. So, you know, um, again, I know that there's a lot of things that again, for whatever reason, have been a blockage for me. Whether it is, again, an outside force that is trying to, again, um, it, it, I'm not okay with being swept under the rug, okay? Because again, the whole thing that I feel has been going on or has occurred, regardless of who it would be or how it would work, um, I feel like for some reason I've had a, uh, some type of a binding something on, on and around me where um, it may be that people may think that I'm aware, but I'm not aware of all things. And I think this is done by some type of sorcery or something like that. Again, it could be a blockage. You know what I'm saying? It could be something um, from within. Um, you know, um, it could be something dealing with source and, and me maybe um, veering off. It could be, you know what I'm saying? I'm just somebody that's just 100% open about how I see things and think so that people can kind of uh, be aware and then also it may help other people on their journey at some point in time. So I'm pretty like pretty open with, there's no, you know, I do this freestyle, you know, there's no planning or anything like that. Again, those who have ears to hear will hear and eyes to see will see, um, you know, but <clears throat> we're in, um, Jung and the uh, Lost Gospels, right? So again, <clears throat> you know, this is kind of even veering off of what we stumbled across. And again, I think that there's a reason that this is occurring. I think that source is also, you know, it's just either ancestors or source are trying to push me through. Um, they know that the world, that I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. They know that there's a lot of people that are taking crafty counsel. So again, the best way with whatever is going on with me, and again, I feel like I have a spirit of some type of mm, a binding or a blind something that is hovering over. Again, you know, I make no excuse, excuses about anything, um, but I notice things. And I do notice that, you know, I notice things that are out of, <clears throat> excuse me, out of character for certain indiv individuals. Again, I'm not claiming to know everybody and everybody's not going to talk about these circumstances out loud and and um and put it on front street. But for me, I have to, because again, like I said, I feel like I have been in a sense isolated and I feel like certain things have happened and I feel like certain energies are trying to let me know or ask or say um, it's over or your turn is over or your time is up. And again, for me, I'm somebody that has like a rebellious kind of something. I don't know. Or maybe it's not even, you know, I just still, once I recognize something, I just want to bring it forth. Um, and that's just me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, okay, read just a couple of parts in here. We're just going to uh, skip through and then we're going to start to read. Because this is a part right here that I was talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, 
Yeshua was, it says Jesus, but we're going to use Yeshua, was intimately associated with his own female disciple, Mary Magdalene. Okay. Um, as we see, these women were much more than disciples and came to represent the divine feminine in association with the um, masculine Messiah. Now, again, in my eyes, I'm not going to speak any names, but I see these individuals in our so-called community. You know, it might be divided in a sense, but again, I'm a seer, so I can see certain individuals. And I also can see myself in a lot of these different um, entities, right? So, um, it says... As we shall see, these women, okay, we already read that part. It says, it is often assumed that the Hebrews were fiercely opposed to goddess worship in all its forms, okay? This may be as far as an utterance of many of the prophets are concerned, but it is to be doubted that the Hebrew popular religi religiosity um, shared the misogyny of these uh, mouthpieces of the Lord. Both the Egyptian and the Babylonian matrix of spirituality, which were so closely associated with the early Jewish um, history. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to see if we're, how we can just skip around and just kind of get the good viewpoints. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> which were so closely associated with early Jewish history, were uh, greatly attached to feminine deities and the common Jewish people felt frequently deprived because their leaders gave them a lonely male God without a consort. Right, let's see. Okay, so we're going to skip forward a little bit. And we're in the, the uh, chapter that's called the, femi the Feminine uh, Wisdom. Okay, and so it says, The Lord who protected us, but also the Lord God's wife, here called by the name of Asherah. Now, again, here we go with the Asherah, as, you know, like that that name, okay? Um, a feminine form of one of the names of the Hebrew gods similarly, similarly um, in the 5th uh, century BC, the Jewish uh, soldiers stationed in Egypt and Elephantine uh, near the uh, near present Asuwin. Again, that's kind of, you know, when I think about Esther, I think about Sioux Indians anyways. Again, those are some of the tribes that, um, you know, some portions of my family will be connected to. Um, so anyways, Sumerian, you know, it, like it all just correlates in the way that I see my theoretical uh, approach to this whole thing. Um, so it says, uh, where won't, well, yeah, it does say where won't. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe that's a, a typo. To worship a not. Yahuwah. A goddess whom they regarded as the wife of their Lord, uh, the God of Israel. Okay. Thus, evidence continues to manifest, indicating that the feminine was not totally absent from the pre-Christian. <clears throat> Again, and so this is what I'm kind of talking about, just like pre-Islamic, pre-Christian, pre-all these things, you know, because there was already things going on, like I was saying in the other video the other day. Um, the, prior to the religious aspect being introduced. So again, we have to remember that these people were being dragged from one particular way especially when it comes to nobility and everything. And then they place idols. Idols are just if they take those people and uh, take them off of the throne and then place someone else there instead. And again, whether gods or whoever would be doing this, I'm just bringing it to the table that this is what was going on. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um <clears throat> We're going to keep on going. I think I'm going to just go ahead and down here. Um, so it says, uh, the principal uh, literary work through which uh, Koma, I don't know, it's kind of reminded of, uh, Ka, oh, hold on one second. Oh, okay. I don't want the thing to stop. <laughs> um, it says Kok, uh, Chokma, but I don't know. There's some tribe that I'm thinking about that, or two tribes mixed that I'm thinking about when I say that, you know, kind of uh, 
remind me of that that particular name but um it says soon came to be known by her greek ana analog uh, sophia the principal literally uh literary work through which sophia made her grand entry into the stage of alexandrian and judean judean <coughs> excuse me uh, spirituality was the book of the wisdom of solomon which in reality represents the first century bc recession of certain elements of hitherto secret jewish uh, tradition regarding the divine feminine okay it is thus that sophia the feminine wisdom of god subsequently so closely associated with the gnostics um, appeared in plain sight for the first time she is represented from the beginning as the divine spirit pervading all beings the book of the of wisdom of solomon she is in fact um identify wait yeah identified as partaking of the power of the creator the work of all things the omnipotent capable of doing all things and as the mother of the gifts of wisdom and prophecy okay entering into holy souls in every generation producing prophets and friends of god there are certainly echoes present in this work of the ancient idea of the kokma sophia uh, may indeed be the consort of the lord god she glorified her nobility by being uh, conversant with god yea the lord of all things hath loved her perhaps even more importantly this feminine wisdom also be, uh, becomes uh, the lover of inspiratrix, of the uh, righteous and the wise. It is thus that Solomon, the archetypical wise man, declared his love for her, her um, for her. Her have I loved and have sought her out from my youth and have desired to take her for my spouse and I became a lover of her beauty. Furthermore, her guidance and her gnosis are considered essential by the author of the Book of Wisdom of Solomon for the proper conduct of a wise and holy life. So, you know, I find it real funny how, you know, some people talk, again, down about us looking at the story this way. But again, I hear people speak and I can hear this again like so we're saying i can hear this particular thing being said but with different terms in different ways so you know sometimes i often think again because sometimes i think about this as like the whole matrix and like uh, a, a truman show outlook on the whole thing so it's almost like scripts like people have scripts because it's, it's random for them to speak in this manner but they're using different coded ways to speak it and again for me this is the word in these words is the only thing like i said i this is what i delve into okay and again because this is this is my way um because this is the gift i feel has been bestowed upon me because again someone knew that some of these particular things will happen and again, this is not even being cocky or any, this is a sense of knowing that something is going on, seeing it play out in front of you and, and using certain gifts and using tools that I have within my home in order to combat things that I see happening randomly. I'm talking picking up books and things and coming right straight directly to the page that you need in order to combat something that has been done. So again, I'm, I would like to just say that this is no way, shape or form me trying to be saying that this is, uh, but I just know what I see here. Okay. And there's a reason why I see these things. Again, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. I like, I see all the energies around me, some that, that you know, I felt were for me, but maybe, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm a, I don't just trust and this is why i have some of these issues with some of the things that might have occurred where um there were some things that were kind of like shady looking you know and i can't you know what i'm saying for me or there were some things that i was probably felt that i was being urged to do that would not have conducted it would have made me not be conducting myself the way that the word is saying that i should so in those cases i had to really tread lightly and really pay attention and make sure that some of these things were not obstacles in order to um 
you know, bring disgrace, you know what I'm saying, to my name or anything. But I think that when we're dealing with the spiritual world, um, this the spiritual realm and this realm as well, and then when you're someone that can see things on this level and within and in the spiritual realm, it is really, really, really tricky. It's real, and when it all happens like at once, and it's just like a flood. You know what I'm saying? And you see like things going on, the world going on. You see different um, agendas being pushed forward. And it's just like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to have a part in that. But we're, you know what I'm saying? We're, wh why does it seem like everybody's going in that direction and I'm just over here? You know what I'm saying? But like I said, the only way that I can just really combat any of it is, you know, in the spirit realm. You know, I mean, that's just the way that I'm looking at it because I, 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 I can actually feel feel and sense and see these things. I can see the players. I may not be able to speak on them and speak their names, but I see the players. So for me, I don't know. Like I said, this is kind of like a, you know, a, a vlog, but we're kind of just like, I'm just taking you guys on my journey um, to a certain extent, you know, because again, you know, I feel like that spirit of um, nakedness, right? Where um, to a certain level, people have been able to peer in, but they only see one portion or one part of the story. They're not seeing the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So like even through this uh, past couple of months, like major changes have happened in my household, in my lifestyle, you know, with my relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's been a, a, a bumpy road. You know, and for me, I'll be damned if I if it, if it's made to look one way that it's not, you know what I'm saying? And, and to look like, you know, it's not like a whole, what I feel, like a whole um, tornado didn't just come in from the spiritual realm, throw shit around in my life, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and act like it wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? And act like this is the way they found it or this is the way that it is. And again, that's, this is just my way, Okay just in case. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> and then again, to find out or to, to start sensing that, you know, and then, and then you wonder why, you know, there is an issue of, you know, trusting going forward. But I think that that, I think that some form of an energy has sent something in to give me that mindset so that I can then not apply myself to certain things. And then I will be cast out to the side because, uh, Potentially, that was what was supposed to happen in the first place. You know, I see time travel. I see all kind of things like I'm not doing it, but I see that there are workers that are here from past, so-called, and then uh, some that are here from present times, you know, and then some of, some of us are being awakened or ascending in this time, okay? And it's all happening for a reason, you know, you got to be on your guard, you know, and that's why I think distraction, distraction, distractions. You know what I'm saying? Anything that comes into my life, I see it as a distraction first. And I can get kind of taken by some of those things and go down those roads. But at some point in time, I can I see something and then it, it makes me stop. You know what I'm saying? And go and, and, and be stagnant and just really try to listen and pay attention. And ask for guidance. You know what I'm saying? And at that time. So it says, send her out of thy... Okay, so again, okay, the book of uh, the wisdom of Solomon for the proper conduct of uh, a wise and holy life. Um, and the reason why I read out of these books and texts, so, you know, I'm just showing you <laughs> how some of this stuff correlates with some of the things that, again, I've been sharing with you guys on the channel, on the platform. So it says, send her out of thy holy heaven and from the throne of thy majesty that she may be with me. So again, you know, once I look at something like that, it makes me think of something where it's like, you know, somebody is asking a favor, you know, it's, it's asking, not, don't ask her if she wants to be, no, send her out. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's almost as if she is a prized possession or uh, a, tr you know, like a trophy or almost like she's like a, an object or something, you know what I'm saying? And this is what I'm saying. I, I like to bring a voice to these particular women. It's something that I feel like is a part of my journey and a, my purpose. And it's a part of me, you know? So, um, <laughs> and how I see things again, going and leveling out on this plane right now, moving forward, 
you know, because uh, I think we're, you know, some people may get caught up into, you know, that feel good feeling. But again, you know, a majority of our people are not going to be in those positions or those statuses to be in charge or taking. So those are going to be the people that these things are going to affect. And so, again, that's why I speak out about these particular type of things in this time. OK, to bring awareness, to have people still question everything. That's all I'm doing. So send her out of thy holy heaven and from the throne of thy majesty. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so again, that feeling of, you know, in a spiritual sense, the whole thing, you know, there's a lot of talk about thrones. And so like in my case, there's a, 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 a thought of a throne that, again, I'm going to have to fight for. In the spiritual realm, not even having my eyes fully open, not even being able to see, not even being invited to the table, but it's going to be going down and you're just going to have to catch wind to see what's going on. And it may look as though, you know, but you don't, you know what I'm saying? And so again, it may seem as though you're reneging or something, but really you are someone that, you know, and I think somebody was saying something the other day about fallen angels and how there's a cloak of deception that they placed on certain individuals so that they would not be able to see so that they would be able to, that some of these beings would be able to, you know, um, in a sense, um, manipulate things or, you know, change things or alter things, you know what I'm saying? And so it's just, I don't know. Uh, these are just things that I see and feel and some of the things that I know. Okay. That she may be with me and may labor with me that I may know what is acceptable with thee. For she knoweth and understandeth all things and shall lead me uh, soberly in my works and shall preserve me by her power. <laughs> okay. Um, so it says, while the book of wisdom of Solomon may be said to represent the feminine wisdom by way of the most exalted imagery, this wisdom is already represented in the very similar manner in the older biblical books of Proverbs. Wisdom is represented here as crying aloud in the land and in the streets, ex exhorting people to abandon their um, childish ways and to cast their uh, and cast away their hatred for gnosis. OK, so again, you know, this is my story to the T. This is what I'm doing on my platforms. And this is, again, what I feel like I'm here to do. But again, I feel like there is definitely a spirit of someone placing idols. Like, again, so I the reason why I'm sharing, sharing it like this and sharing the whole as much as I can of the journey with you guys is that, you know, somebody can be something. Yeah. They can have documents, they can have this, but if you have it, something that is within you and you're able to show that to the world in a sense without calling yourself something, but again, hoping people will be able to see what you're saying, you know what I'm saying? That's all I can really, that's all I am doing. <laughs> okay. It's not all I can do, but it's all I'm doing. <clears throat> so, you know, um, again, that that's what this channel is really basically about, actually, you know, especially lately. OK. Um, and again, you know, I've seen again today within my feed, I've seen people um, saying um, things, you know, like about uh, certain groups and stuff like that. And, you know, how how we should be accepting of certain things. And, you know, I won't get too uh, specific. Um, cause I feel like whatever the spirit is, it's on a lot of us. You know, if you're connected to source, I feel like any of us could be experiencing these things and we can also be peering into other people. You know what I'm saying? So again, those, like it says, my sheep will hear my voice. They know my voice. <laughs> so again, um, not to say it's my voice, but again, in a sense, you know, in, in, in a Christ consciousness or, um, in the Ruach or the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So Again, which sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit is representing Yeshua in some points. And again, maybe a male, male and female twin flame or connected type of way. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> let's see. Um, okay. Wisdom by way, the most exalted imagery. This wisdom is already represented in the 
very special manner of the older biblical books of Proverbs. Okay, so she's exalting these things in the street and, you know, cast away their hatred for gnosis. So again, you know, and sometimes when you're talking like this, I know this is not what gnosis mean, but, you know, <laughs> I think that sometimes people, um, you know, kind of convinced are convinced that this person is a know-it-all or they this that and that and you know so that alone can bring people to uh, you know despise or you know feel some kind of way you know and and that's where I think that the confusion comes in so it says in the same book wisdom is accorded uh, uh primacy in all creation and is called the firstborn of God companion in God's work and one who delights with him in his creation and in humanity okay so i'm gonna go ahead and keep going i'm skipping over just a little bit you know <sighs> distinctively feminine characteristics this person takes on distinctively feminine characteristics again so she's going to be somewhat um very distinctively uh feminine you know, in a sense, you know, I would, I would say really soft, possibly, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, we're just reading this. Okay. And I'm just giving, again, I'm never here to tell you what it is or what it ain't. I'm simply sharing what it looks like to me. Okay. <clears throat> so again, if I don't share my story, whose story should I share? You know what I'm saying? If I'm not going to share my story so I can tell you all of the things or most of the things or some of the things that I've seen that I feel that I sense. Um, that I know that you have already seen me speak, you know what I'm saying? How else can I, you know, again, share my story without talking about the story, but also, you know, bringing awareness to the fact that this is a collective thing and that this could be going on again with other individuals in, in the spirit realm and, and in here, uh, um, in this worldly realm. Okay. So it says the archetype of the feminine wisdom has come to, uh, constellate itself as glorious as a glorious woman as a goddess slightly uh, disguised who stands in a uh, specially intimate relationship to all seekers of wisdom um let's see whereas uh to the pious reader of proverbs and the book of the wisdom of solomon the wisdom woman appeared as the e ether ethereal okay a spirit of a higher of the higher worlds uh to later individuals she appeared as a physical woman the first one to devise a mythological framework for the manifestation of wisdom in incarnate woman uh form was the um Afri wait let's see aforementioned uh simon magus um, it is reported that Simon encountered a woman named Helen and recognized in her the first thought, um, a synonym for wisdom, who long ago had descended into the created world and, the, and underwent a process of deterioration and uh, degradation. Simon himself is said to have expressed um, this process in the following poetic account. And I'm going to go ahead and read that, and then I'm going to stop and do a part two. So it says, in the beginning, the father intended to bring forth the angels and the archangels. His thought leaped forth from him, this thought, who knew her father's intentions. Okay? So again, you know, at this, I, I, at this point, what can I do? You know? So again, when it comes to Elohim or Adonai, you know, I feel like, you know, I, I would be lying to you guys to not, to, to not say that, that I, I don't feel again, and there's no reason for me to make this stuff up or anything of that nature, um, to know that there has been a feeling and an involvement again within the spirit realm and on this worldly realm to a certain extent, um, that, um, I feel like this was happening when, when, when you hear me talking about different entities and stuff like that being involved with, 
you know, I, at, at, at a point I'm thinking like, okay, so these individuals or these entities have been sent here to help or guide or show me something or tell me something or just, you know, messengers, you know, because angels again were in messengers or whatever um, in the biblical text or looked at as. Um, and so again, in that sense, I feel like in the spiritual realm, I, I had this feeling of that someone coming to, to show something or something, a companion in, in the spiritual realm to help lead me into or down this road. Okay. But I also feel like there's some that were, again, when we talk about that whole story of Rahab or whatever, sending in spies into uh, the temple or over the wall. And I think that again, to me, that that represents to me, sometimes I feel like a form of witchcraft. And I think it's a, a female entity or energy in that biblical text that has sent over some spies into the, we, let's even just say the temple or the mindset, because we have to get out of this way of thinking that, you know, we have to remember that there was a certain form of ancient technology and telepathic, uh, you know, even so-called remote viewing or something like that, you know what I'm saying, that was going on at certain points in time in this story. So if you start thinking about it in that way, and you think about, you know, how, again, we, we are also experiencing things where we can tap into other uh, energies or they're calling astral or um different type of uh, things like that. Okay. We'll just, again, I'm not trying to go too deep. I'm just speaking. Okay. Um, so again, I, I feel like that spirit, I can see that spirit also. So that's why I'm just kind of like weird about, you know, um, speaking on things or even letting, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's like almost like a, uh, the whole thing of knew they were naked and knowing that that means that you were open or exposed or whatever. Um, and so it's like, um, I always feel like there's an eye peering over my shoulder in a sense, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes it feels like it is a good energy and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a, like a succubus kind of, you know, like it's something there to draw something from. Okay. And, and, and again, I can't always identify which energies when. So that's the very confusing thing. Okay. So again, some of these energies sometimes get intertwined or it's just like, wait a minute, well, who was or what was, you know what I'm saying? So it's, um, that's why it can be very draining, I think, you know, dealing in this work. And so again, if I'm, I'm all the way dealing in this work, then that means that other things are going to be put on the, you know, back burner, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Um, while you're doing this type of work, you know, um, it just, it's just real. Okay. So. Um, so again, thus she descended, um, to the lower realms again. And, and even this is reminding me of the story of Inanna, which again, Ishtar, Astara, I, again, all of these entities and energies, I feel like are still connected to that root. And I'll tell you why. And then this book is going to say something about the fact that, um, the spirit of this, um, all seeing or all the spirit of this um holy spirit um or ruach you know um has has been again uh, we'll get to it about how it how it uh travels the soul travels or whatnot is what i feel we're talking about okay so again <clears throat> okay uh, so again, the angels and archangels, um, his thought leaped forth from him. This thought who knew her father's intention, uh, thus she descended to the lower realm. She bore angels and powers, um, who then created the world. Okay. So again, now it's saying that these angels and powers, um, created the world. And I do feel like, you know, um, to a certain extent that, you know, um, that could possibly be so. But then again, some of these angels will be angels <laughs> that will be very, you know, aware of certain things, you know. Um, mm, you know. Hmm. You know, it's almost like even like sometimes how you can feel like, 
um, if you put forth something or information or something in a, in abundance, right? And 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 you start to see like even those that may have despised at one point the information, you'll start to see like even if it's in code or parables, you'll start to see that you know the information is being spread or shared or seen, you know, even if the people don't really deal with you, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, some things that there are a minimum amount of people doing them, right? And especially within the so-called community, indigenous so-called community, American Indian so-called community, you know, a lot of us kind of recognize each other and see each other and know each other's work to a certain extent. You know, uh, we've been walking with the, with each other for a while. So again, there's really no need to, you know, there's no, people are going to see what they're going to see. Okay. Now there might be an energy that came in, comes in and changes that because again, you, this whole sense of awareness or this whole sense of uh, a one-sided aspect of things um, that may be done in the dark, but at the end of the day, um, you know, people are going to think what they're going to think. And then some people are going to know what they know. And there's a time to speak and there's a time to not. There's a time to be all in it and tell it how it is. And there's a time to kind of sugarcoat it. And I really don't like sugarcoating, <laughs> you know. So, and, you know, you know, you guys know how I deal with the word and, you know, things like that. So, um, hmm. So again, that's reminding me of the story of Inanna. Um, just again. Um, but again, this is the part where I feel like we are at this point in time. But after she thus bore them, she was held captive by them. She suffered every indignity from them. And she could not return to the father. So again, you know, in all aspects, I just want to talk about this for a second because, you know, this is where it comes into play where, you know, I was, I was reading something like this in another text and it's like, you know, I think it's like kind of like not right. And that's why I'm going to speak out about this again, because I'm seeing right on a different, on a different level. Right. So <clears throat> a lot of times I think that these things that have been done to, uh, uh, disregard or uh defile the females are things that are out of their control it are th is things that are happening by sorcery by things that are happening behind closed doors and things that are happening you know what i'm saying to particular women you know um in order to again Sometimes refuse or reject and then worship idols or, you know, it's things like that. Or even sometimes maybe the woman herself, you know, uh, knowingly or unknowingly um, rejected something. And then, you know, again, sometimes we don't know it, it because we've been lied to about the whole uh, situation. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't know that certain things are being used against them. They don't know how to protect themselves because, again, we've lost all sense of so-called culture a long time ago there's some people in some you know groups in some states that are strong still in certain things you know what i'm saying but then there's others that have lost contact and there's some of us that are regaining it also you know what i'm saying with the ancestors uh being involved you know and so you know uh let's see so again, I know for a fact by going through some of these spiritual things, by having these visions and having these dealings, that I know for a fact that some of these women were misrepresented. Uh, and there were certain things that were happening to them that they could not have any idea was going on. I know for a fact. And sometimes I think certain energies can try to make you feel like that. So that they can have an advantage or have you feeling in a, in a way like, oh, no, I've done something. But if you stand strong in who you are and you know what your dealings are and so the, the uh, most high or whatever the father knows your heart. Right. And he sees all things. Right. So then how can someone tell you something that you, you know, and again, <clears throat> how much of this stuff is happening 
in in the uh, in your conscious mind and in in your subconscious. You know uh, how much control? Again, I heard someone speaking on this today. Um, do people have you know over your uh, the dream world? Right. <laughs> when it comes to people that are targeted or people that are you know again, we'll just stop there. So again. And, and in my eyes, I'm I'm gonna keep on uh, rising, and I would hope that any women that you know would too. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. So again, um, and then okay, and she could not return to the father. Um, and it, again, it's it's funny how <laughs> some of this stuff is said, but you know, like even when I read that part, I read just this little part earlier and, and I started to commune with um, Elohim about how I felt some kind of way about this. Um, and I'm hoping that again, <laughs> you know, some things m may be cleared up, you know, um, again, I mean, I have confidence in spirit. Uh, communing with Elohim I, I didn't always feel that way but again now now whether he you know what I'm saying it's hearing me every time or not you know um but I feel like that it's not to the point where when I was younger and I didn't understand any of this stuff and I looked at everything like in the church so strange and I, I would be praying but really like mm, you know <laughs> when I started saying it more like I'm communing with I don't know things change for me you know, it's, it's, and it's not like I didn't know that there's a higher force there the whole time. It's just, I don't know, something changed. Okay. And thus from age to age, she passed from body to body. And again, I, I, all, I also still feel like I feel like energy transfer as well. See, because some of these beings, again, that we allow within close proximity to us, you know, some of them, you know, and again, there's always the good and bad, you know, uh, and it's hard to decipher sometimes where and which. So um, I still also feel like there is also, um, some people may call it body snatching, but I say energy snatching. Okay. So again, those of us that are very powerful beings, you know, you're going to have a very, you have a certain aura or light, or even when we're talking about that firmament or that dome, you understand? <laughs> that is around us you know and and people and and certain beings can see that and 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 if they can chip away at that then you know and it can be some things that we're doing or some work that we need to do that might be the cause of it <laughs> as well so again it's not the blame game it's just saying it for what it is and i'm just sharing my experience this way so um so again into one female body after the other. Thus, she became the lost sheep, okay? And it also is reminding me of the um, cornerstone that was rejected, right? Because if we're talking about heads and removing certain heads and placing other ones there, that would be idol worship. Because again, I would have to say that the energy would have to fit a lot of different descriptions. And if it's not a multitasking, multi-universal, multi, you know what I'm saying? We talking about some real cosmic beings here. Okay. Again, that may not always show their light or share their light, but again, you know them when you see them. Um, and then maybe it's just those that are them that can see them. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I think. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So me, all the time when I see these kind of things like this, became a lost sheep or it's over or, you know, this, it makes me just cringe and it makes me say, no, that's not the case. See? And again, that's what maybe makes me such a bad... <laughs> child <laughs> a rebellious child sometimes because it's like no because again and I can do that because if I'm experiencing this and if I'm seeing this and I'm knowing this then I can say no no wait a minute that's not the way it went down at all so if somebody's telling you that and if the, you know what I'm saying so I had to check what's going on then you know what I'm saying so 
just the way I see it. And again, I refuse. So again, we're going to, um, I'll read this last portion and we'll, we'll be done with this and, and I'll go to part two. And it says one of the female bodies occupied by the first thought says Simon was that of Helen of Troy, um, the most beautiful and faithful woman known in the, uh, to the ancient Greeks. Now, again, I, I don't know why, <laughs> um, but again, this re recently, this year, um, I found out, um, I was doing some research on my side, one of my sides of the family. And I found it was funny that, um, you know, that my, uh, family member was from, um, again, cause this, this is kind of stuff that helps me see, um, her name was Helena and she was from Helena, Troy. And with the last name, there was actually a, uh, <laughs> Um, what do you call it? A plantation there, actually. So on both sides of my family, there's plantations under those names. But, um, you know, I found it real funny. And then how I was looking up even about my grandfather, um, one of my grandfathers, and I saw that he was in some type of school. And I don't know, and maybe, uh, his mother taken in as a missionary. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it, it seems like they were in some place. They had been taken to some place. Um, and I just can't really, because again, when it comes to these certain family uh, lines, it, it's just like a cold, you know what I'm saying? It just goes real cold f for me. Um, but, but you know, there's always new stuff popping up, you know, on the websites and stuff like that. Um, you know, hopefully one day this summer I can, you know, get to a couple of these places because I really want to see them. Um, you know, and then, you know, just knowing that the Trojan Wars and Troy and all that stuff, it has to do with the South here in the Americas. Um, again, if you want to say that it's over there somewhere, you can say that. But again, most of that stuff we're talking about, you know, Athens and all that stuff we're talking about right here, you know, in the Americas. Um, I think I did a video a while back because I went down by Spartanburg on Google Maps. Um, I think it was Spartanburg because that's where the other... Uh, family members are from and you know it made me think about the Spartans and then if you look back a couple months ago I did one of those things where we went and looked at the layout of the land and you can see like a figure there <clears throat> that looks like it's like doing the Wakanda forever <laughs> in the ground um it's like a large male image or whatever um in the ground um but anyways that's oh, hold on hold on one second I'm sorry apologies Yeah, I'm recording something. Okay. All right, come here. <clears throat> well, I don't know what to... I'll make you some noodles since your throat is hurting. 